John, John, we're John, and we're John. Guess what? We're live! We did it. We did it! Here we are. We're on Drawn to Fantasy. <laughs> you and me. Tony. We're here. We did it. We did it. We did. We're almost, we're almost to another week. <laughs> it's it. In People our alternate are... reality. We are drawn to fantasy. Hello, everyone. Yes, we are. We are. Ooh, your voice is sounding sultry. Did you like that? I did. With James Modling, and don't forget, Eric Berker, Ermagard, and Jason Alona. You're not Alona anymore. That's a dad joke, Ange. Kevin Sylvester. And Richard T. Balsley. Don't forget. Jill Shipman and our new friend Michael Harbour. That's my mouth trumpet. I remember a mouth trumpet. Um, who was it that said Charo? Where's the show where Charo is like, I'm really talented with a mouth trumpet? And then she played mouth trumpet. We did it. And it's Thursday. Guess what? It's Thursday. I'm back. You're back. It's going to be a better episode it is. already because it's, be it it's already getting better. Exactly. I'm seeing hearts. I'm seeing love. Yes. The Ange love. They're like, oh, thank God. Yesterday was so unbelievably, you know, I, I, uh, full transparency, full disclosure. Yeah. It's been a little, you know, this, it's been a little couple last couple of days. It's been a little rough for me. I think it's just, you know, the heaviness of our reality. It comes in waves and, uh, Now. Weather's beautiful. Beautiful now. Look at this, guys. Look at that. Oh, come Going on, outside. Yeah, I can't wait. I so missed okay. you guys, Penny. Thanks for asking. I did miss you guys. The flower I, delivery went but, incredibly yes, well, though. I just posted to my, my Facebook page. Soap and I went out and did our flower delivery yesterday, and it was awesome. She raised over 100 bucks. We were going nonstop. We went to four different towns delivering flowers. So amazing. Oh, there's me, Mimi. I did a uh, Instagram live today. You did. You've got a lot of those going on. I know. I've got some more. I next feel week. like we've slipped in plugging those. We should be plugging those for you. I'm sorry. I would have plugged it yesterday. Tony just isn't the same without you, Ange. Thanks, Eric Burkert. Thanks, Eric Burkert, for pointing out the obvious. You know that, T. I do. I know it. I know it. I think it was coupled with the fact that I've just again I've been oh, on. You know it's true. A little bit of a uh, funk. Uh, Drawing dogs today. We were trying to think of what to do. Well, listen, because when you're feeling down, what makes you happier than drawing dogs? Than drawing a dog. And this is our dog, Mimi. You guys have heard uh, the dogs going nuts. Of course, now today, when we're celebrating them, nothing. I've been just thinking of our Today's dogs. It's International Dog Day. It is. It, here in the Dieter Lisi house, <laughs> I it just is. made that up. It, well, I think it should be. <laughs> Um, just going to draw some dogs today. I've been thinking about dogs and I've been thinking about our dogs and how much, um, joy they bring us and all our pets really. I mean, maybe you're not a dog person. Maybe you're a cat person. Well, you know what? Cats are awesome too. Um, maybe you're with your fish <laughs> or your gecko, your leopard gecko. Or your rock, your pet rock. Or your hamster. Or what I want to do one of these days, I keep talking about it. What? I want to get, you can buy um, egg cases of man, praying mantises Where's from all of Yeah, no, but you can get like the orchid ones. Like you can get the oh, ones from, cool. yeah. Um, I mean, that'd be cool to have David, a little orchid mantis. David Howe said he's going back to work on the 20th, and sadly, this is his last full week here. Yes, David Howe. Well, David Howe, you probably know, I, I was talking about this yesterday. You know, a lot of people, We've, like I said, I've noticed that the viewership has gone down. Again, not why we're doing it, but what it tells me is that everyone's getting busy again. I think like, they're trying to get things up and running. Whether you agree with that or not, it is what's happening. And, um, you know, our feelings are we want everyone to be safe and well, but we also, um, we need our economy to kind of also kind of get moving again a little bit. So I think it's all, it's a very complicated uh, solution 
I don't know personally if we've done it the right way, but I'm also not a world leader. I'm just a guy who draws mermaids and fairies for a and living. And dogs today. And dogs today. Our dog. <laughs> Our dog. Um, so. We will miss you, David. But, you know, Tony and I are having the same conversation, actually. Being totally on. I don't know if you mentioned that. I did yesterday. I talked about it a little bit. Like, that maybe we'll... But here's the thing. We love doing this so much that I don't want to just be like, okay, thanks, guys. It's been real. Bye. Um, so maybe it would be, you know, we might bring it back to like, you know, do it every Friday or something like well, that. Well, I mean, today should be, the tomorrow should be the last day because Alfonso is uh, going out of town for a week oh, after well, tomorrow. Geez. So what's the point? Of going if on a, if Alfonso's Alfonso. not going to be here, then why? Are you why? going to meet up with Dorothy? Oh. oh! Give us the scoop. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's like, why did I say anything? <laughs> I'm drawing our well, dog. Molly, Molly Porridge is allergic to all pets. Molly. What? All of them? Like no. all of them, all of them? Is it their dander? No, but like. But like fish? Lizards to, and tortoises too. She's allergic to all those things. Whoa. Praying mantises? <laughs> Molly Porridge. I'm so sorry. Aww. Yeah, we're drawing dogs. If you have a dog, or there's a dog you love, or you Google awesome dogs, and you find a dog that you think is cool, feel free to draw a dog today. Drawing a dog today. I've been thinking about it. Now, um, I'm drawing also a dog because... There are a couple dogs in the next picture book I'll be doing, so I've been thinking about dogs and drawing dogs, and I haven't drawn dogs in a little while because I've been working on all this Kenny and the Dragon uh, stuff, which um, I'm very excited about. And um, anyway, I was thinking about dogs. Jason Alona has three bunnies. Ooh. Bunnies are so cute. Rabbits are hard to draw, Jason Alona. I, I you know, I know this from from working on Kenny and the Dragon. I, their their skulls are fairly complicated. Um, anyway, I'm just doing a little warm up here with our our good old Mimi, who's a rescue. We have res, uh, two rescue dogs, Mimi and Pippin. Pippin named after um, the Hobbit, aka Peregrine Took, and he's <laughs> just as mischievous. If there was a plain planetar in hidden somewhere here, he would certainly dig it up and um, look at it and look into the eye of Sauron. He wouldn't care. And he then would chew it and lick it. That's kind of how uh, he rolls. David Howe had pet manises. Nice. Sweet. Sheila, you should totally get a corgi. I'm obsessed with corgis. Oh, gosh, they're so funny. They're so fu I saw one yesterday. They're like the like... pugs of 2020, right? They are. They're like the, the new sloth. The new sloth is a corgi. Like, there's always the animals that are on trend, and right now I feel like corgis are definitely a thing, right? I, I think like, they have been. Yeah. But it was like alpacas for a while. Owls. Mamas, and, but, I feel like owls. There was a whole owl thing, like, where you just, you'd go into, like, a, a store, and there'd be, you know, owl pillows. and. Really? Yeah. What like, store are you going to? <laughs> What is the owl? The owlery? The, that you're going the, to? the, like, it, are you the sure nature you're not company. About Harry Potter? The nature company. Oh, yeah. Was that <laughs> the nature company 30 years ago? There's so many owls here. Who knew there would be so many Look owls? At all of the barn owls and barred owls uh, and uh, every guy. owls. <laughs> suet. Suet owls and. Uh, so here's Mimi, Ange. I'm just going to. There's Mimi. I got to draw some dogs when I got to do uh, the story of Deaver and Flea. Diva and Flea. Hey, this is pretty awesome. Speaking of the story of Diva and Flea. Oh, yes. We should talk about our friend guys, Mo. Our friend Mo Willems, who Tony collaborated with on the story of Diva and Flea. Set your DVRs if you're not night people. Otherwise, let yourself stay up late. Uh, the pigeon should get to stay up late tonight for sure. Um, because Mo Willems, our pal, uh, will be on The Tonight Show tonight with Jimmy Fallon. Yes. So take uh, a little time out. And how cool is that, that a kid's book author and illustrator is going to be doodling with Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show tonight? Pretty terrific. So awesome. Love that. I love when anybody from our industry is acknowledged in that way. Yes. So happy for Mo. Very, very He's cool. He's been doing such awesome stuff. He's been uh. doing um, some great online stuff for kids. Um, on his YouTube, yeah. uh, or no, the Kennedy Center's the Kennedy Center, YouTube channel. He's their 
their artist in residence. Artist in residence. Yeah. So take a peek, see some. Uh, how cool, you guys! An artist is gonna be on the Tonight Show tonight. So yes, cool. very cool. Professional doodler, Mo Willems. Yep. Mimi's looking real fluffy. Look how cute. Well, she's she's extra fluffy. No, it looks like she's got a, a fluffy, uh, a floofy ruff. Well, she kind of does. Look at that! All that neck I know, fur. I like it. It's when the, when the collar kind of rides up, it, it makes her neck get extra furry. I like drawing Mimi. I have a great that there's a what's her name Vera Brosgol. Am I saying her name right? That she's a uh, yeah, Vera Brosgol. She did a, when she came to visit. She did a really cool drawing of Mimi. I have to dig that up. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Now I used to draw our pug Goblin all the time too. She was fun to draw. Anyway, here's a little drawing of Mimi. Uh, let's see if I can put her shadow in here. Um, maybe a, uh, a mutt like Mimi is not to your liking. You're more of a purebred uh, She's a floof. drawer. She's a floof. Uh, this is a book. I've had this quite a while. Um, let's see what book this is. Jason went. Alona, don't be too intimidated to draw your pets. Just get in there. Yeah, draw from life, draw your pets. This came out in 1995. I'm not sure if it's still in print. But it's a great book because it goes through all the dog breeds. And you just get these cool shots of the dog from all different, you know, angles. Look at that. Hi there. Guess what? The remote's gone. I ate it. Um, Here I did do Anya's ghost. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> anyway, I love. Look at that. All the shapes and forms of dogs. Of course, you can always Google it. And uh, hot diggity dog. Who doesn't want to draw that? Um, I just love, I, I love kind of paging through here and then just drawing, drawing dogs and their different weirdness. Like seriously, that thing should be covered in tattoos as well. If you're going to rock a haircut like that. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, I thought we'd draw dogs today. Cause I, as I said, I'm thinking of dogs. Hello. I'm thinking of, of dogs mm -hmm. and, uh, say what you're thinking of dogs. Sorry. I'm done now. But, um, we got that. And Mimi is not a dog though. Mimi is a... She's a luck dragon. She is a tiny luck dragon. <laughs> and you guys can't see her unicorn, unicorn horn because it's been enchanted by Mommy Fortuna. Mm -hmm. And you can't see the horn actually under... That's really there. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That's the other thing you can do when you do it. But I, uh, it's like a life drawing exercise. It's just not drawing people for, for the day. And we did a lot of that. The other day I posted some of my mermaid drawings that we did, Ange. Little Mermaid kept that kind of going. Charity, kind of I would totally be a crazy dog lady too. I love dogs. She does. It's it's me that's keeping it in check. Yeah. It really is. You and Sophia, if you had your way, there'd, oh, forget it. there'd be how many dogs here? I mean, not like a ridiculous amount. Like, what's not a ridiculous like a crazy pack of animals? But like I what's could a ridiculous? third one. Well, what, what where does it that's that's when you hit ridiculous <laughs> levels is four? Four's a lot. Four's a lot. Well, when they outnumber you. Yeah, that's why I feel like, you know, three would be just... Ridiculous. It's just when we fly, though. That, oh, I know. It's... There's, well, that one for each of us. Yeah. I don't know. It stresses me out when we fly with them. It really does. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> of this you know, of course. Mm -hmm. All too well. Okay, today's 14th. I'm going to also draw our, uh, our cute and rambunctious dog, Mr. Pips. There he is. Mr. Pips! The Pipster. Pippin has those kind of eyes that... Uh, Pippin, how many nicknames do you guys have for your pets? Because our dogs get a lot of nicknames. Well, we a lot have a lot of, of nicknames for each other, even. Yeah, it's true. Pippin's That's head... poopers! Yeah, Pippin. Pipster. Pippin's dripping. That's when he's going to the bathroom. That's what we say. He is like a... Uh, a golden retriever that's been hit with a shrink ray. David House said, oh, you think of getting a cat. No. No, Angie's allergic. And when I say allergic, that means she's like, just recoils at the idea of a cat. <laughs> no, we had two cats. We had two cats. When I'm Tony kidding. And I, here's the thing. I love kittens. <clears throat> kittens are fun. Kittens are adorable. But cats, not so much. But cats, it makes me mad that they don't want to snuggle when I want to snuggle. No, everything's on their terms. Everything they're, is on their terms. They're too when, close to human. That's why. Yeah. When they I really want to snuggle, it's snuggle time. Yeah. And Pippin is down. Anytime. Snuggle. He'll snuggle right now if you want yeah. to. DTS, he is down to snuggle. All right. He's also not the brightest bulb, though. But that's also part of his endearing. He just growled when you said that. He that really was did. Amazing. 
Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh god, he would chase a squirrel. He's like dog and uh, up. Squirrel. Squirrel's cat. Oh, so my my one of my best besties has two. Are those sphinxes? What are those cats she has? They're like they're not hair. It's like a sphinx. Devon Rex. Devon Rex, which is like a sphinx, right? Uh, I think they are plotting no. my death. And when they look at me, I can tell they want me to die. So they freak me out. They're just looking and plotting to murder me, and... If it wasn't politically incorrect, you'd almost sing the, the song from Lady and the Tramp, the, yeah, we, they want to, the we Are Siamese, they want where they're to, knocking Emily. over things, and it, for them, they're just sharpening knives for you. Emily C. Merton has cats that are down to snuggle. Oh, see, it's on how you train mm. the cat. Teach okay. the cat. And if you give the cat love... It will only know love. I saw a cat yesterday. My friend Cinda has a cat named Cow. And cow, <laughs> cat cow? Cat named Cow. And he is he follows you around. He's very dog like. But you know, I guess I did see one cat at the rescue once where I was like, I wish I was not allergic because this cat is awesome. Why was it awesome? Super, super snuggly, sweet, just wanted attention. Like just I don't know. There was something. We had a little special connection. Aww. Yeah, it was... Mm, Short-lived? Sure he got rescued. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. If Pippin looks like he's going, huh, it's because he is. Louisa's cat doesn't like hugs very much. And you don't really respect her opinion. That's hilarious. Pretty good. Yeah. Pippin has, a like, almost a pug-like tail, but it's soup. It's... Real curly like a little pigtail, but it's super foofy. All cats are plotting to murder someone. See? Yeah, I agree. They, you know, they tolerate humans. Like I said, they're the closest to humans. They're more like humans than dogs. Dogs are like the best of humans. <laughs> cats are just like humans. Pooping. I want to snuggle. Oh, she's going to get Pip. I want to snuggle. So here's Pip. He's doing some warm-ups. Kind of figuring out. I've made his eyes a little bigger, obviously. Hey, Papino. Um, trying to... Hey, buddy. thought you could use some, you know, life drawing. Oh, yeah. Here he <laughs> is. Look at that meatball head. He is a total meatball. He is. Hey, we'll take some questions yeah, today. I didn't get to um, I didn't get to I didn't get to do them any yesterday because I was flying solo. It's kind of hard when the you see the you see all the notes and comments kind of zipping past while you're trying to draw. Um, but um, you know, you, if you guys have questions, I'll be happy to to take them today. Joe Bullock said I came across a picture of Goblin the other day. Oh. Yes, Goblin was our pug we had for many years. She was amazing. She's a good. She's a good dog. Thirteen years we had her. Yeah. She's a good dog. Pugs are, you know, it's funny because they're not even like dogs. They're gargoyles. Yeah, they are. And, oh, man, there was so much to clean on her all the time. The ring skulls. So many orifices. And the ears needed cleaning and everything needed to be cleaned and Q-tipped. And, and she snored all the time and farted all the time. And we oh my loved God. her I so loved her. much. I loved her. But and then you realize how much... Because she's so... I mean, Low maintenance compared to... Quiet. Okay, questions. Goblin was a bad hog. Questions, questions. We had a Maine Coon cat. We did. Those are big cats. Yeah, we had one of those. Moving the eyes we up a little. When T and I first started dating, we had two cats, Madison and Lexington. Yes. When our I was dreams a big f- were to move to New York City. We were to move to New York City and, and also a big fan of Splash. And what D&D class would Mimi and Pippin play? Well, he's a kobold through and through. He's a mischievous kobold. Mimi? Hmm. Wow. He's like a kobold thief, in fact. Oh, heck yeah. He's a thief. Sure. He's always always stealing stuff. Yeah. Uh, he, it, he specializes in stealing anything that ends in the word Eidos. Eidos, <laughs> Doritos, Tachitos, Fritos. Fritos. Uh, we had some extra um, Easter candy. So the base, you know, we hide, Soph still likes when I hide um, things and help the Easter bunny out by hiding out, hiding candy for her and stuff. And she likes to go on an Easter bunny hunt in the morning, on Easter morning, as most kids do. And she's so good at sharing 
that she puts all the Easter candy in a basket and then we can pick at it, you know, for the next three months. We'll just sit and eat it until it gets super stale. Anyway, um, there were, we, we are pretty systematic in our eat, eat candy consumption. This is for Halloween as well. We'll eat all of one type of candy, then another. So we had moved through all the Jordan almonds or something we'd eaten. All that was left primarily were uh, Hershey, Hershey Kisses. So Ange and I, Sophie had gone to bed. It's 10, 10 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Ange and I are watching TV, Lock and Key, I believe. Mm-hmm. And um, Pippin comes walking in very surreptitiously, and he's holding a Ziploc bag in he's his mouth. He's dragging it to show me. And this bag that had been full, full of Hershey Kisses was now completely empty. He'd eaten them, wrapper and all. I think we told you guys about this. this mo- we did our... We did Drawn to Fantasy the day after. And yeah. I told you all about it. So we were up, and Pippin was wild the next day. He was. Because he was so caffeinated from all the sugar. That's right. Because we were like, good news, it's not real chocolate. <laughs> so he's not, it's not going to hurt him, his kidneys and digestive. But bad news, he's ingested an ungodly amount of sugar. And uh, yeah, he was crazy. But oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, Kate Blair Wheeler, do you have a name picked out for a third dog? It's oh, the third dog I'm you'll eventually get. so glad, Something Sophia. Something really ugly named Gollum. Oh. I think would be. Awesome. Smeagol, get over here, Smeagol. Smeagol, Smeagol would be a good Smeagol. name. Smeagol. Smeagol. Smeagol, what I tell Bad you? Bad Smeagol. Bad Smeagol. Smeagol, uh. fetch ring. Wow. <laughs> No, I don't know. Goblin had know. Goblin also had nicknames though. We didn't just call her Goblin. We called her uh, Woogie because we thought when we saw something about Mary and there's a line we're like, "You're Woogie," and he's like, "Yeah, I'm Tom Wogowski," and we're like, "Woogie, that's just such a funny nickname." And she looked like a Woogie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Smeagol. Smeagol's good. Smeagol be good, right? Smeagol's good. I, as I get older. I don't want just the real cute, puffy, fluffy ones. I kind of like really ugly ones, too. Well, I mean, look, you're with me. <laughs> no! Honey. <laughs> honey. That's not That's the tu- That's the tubby out of shape one. <laughs> no! That's not true at all. You look much better since I gave you your haircut. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I aged and de-aged. Yeah, right Carolyn. Then. Pippin's uh, business was extra shiny with all that tin. Oh food. my gosh, it was sparkling. I'm oh drawing Pip- this, Pippin's talking in this, this is little. My, mom. my mom's like, my mom just texted me. Can you send me the thing that I need? And I said, yeah, I'll send it to you. We're live right now. Well, I'll send it to you afterwards. Then she writes, live right now? Yes. <laughs> like now, now? Or now, now? I thought Disney did a good job when they did. Um, the dog, the dogs, and late, uh, Lady and the Tramp. They were really well animated. You can oh, tell yeah. I'm conjuring a little bit of that here with He's Pippin. A oh my god, I love that. Loved that even when I was a kid. Like just... draw him, draw Pippin as a um... tramp. No, this is D and D character. Oh, I like that. Hold I like on, that. I'm gonna change the tunes. I want something more D and D ish. More D and D ish. More Dungeons and Dragons-ish. Man, so it's going to be bummed. She missing, she's missing all this. I know. She wants to totally host one day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, tomorrow's Friday, so maybe if she feels like doing the uh, draw by request, she can do it, or we'll do it together if she's up for it. Let's see. Um, the uh, I got to draw a cool dog and a cat in the story of Diva and Flea, written by our friend Mo Willems. That was great because um, the original dog was that Mo based it off of was a um, oh what was it? It's, it's a uh, oh, um, uh, Cairn. Is it Cairn Terrier? It's what Dorothy has in the nineteen thirty seven Wonder Wizard of Oz. And I based it on a on a um, on Rooney. What's uh, that? Rooney's a uh, Westy. Westy. Uh, only because the cat was black. That that Mo used as the inspiration for the cat, and so I thought it to really further push the contrast between them as characters. I thought it'd be good to make the dog dog white, um, just so that because the book was illustrated in black and white, so they're with a little bit of spot color. So I thought it was kind of fun to really push that color uh, difference in the in their coats. There's Pippin. 
talking. Well, you know. Well, you know. I mean, it's not... You know, it's... there's hardly any chocolate. <laughs> any real chocolate. In Hershey Kisses. <laughs> there you go. There's this Pippin just telling Mimi all about, well, you know. And then, you know, he's, his breath is just chocolate breath. I'm going to switch... Uh, from our beloved... Oh, wait, you guys were saying make Pippin into a... I was um, thinking make Pippin. Pippin into his D&D character? Well, because you... you every t Okay, Pippin also lays really strangely. Oh, yeah, like a gargoyle. Well, we have gargoyle yeah, drawings. Yeah, like I'm, a gargoyle. We should have printed one of those out. We've got a lot. But the other thing is, if you... I don't know if you have a photo of it. I can't show you the one on my phone. But if you open a window... So, say this is the windowsill... And here's the window in our house. And here's the floor with these like low windows, big tall windows that look out. He immediately stands up like this. Right? And he kind of... And it's just so funny, you know, seeing him kind of stand there and his tail's all like this. And he's kind of, you know, well, I, I actually got it. It's more like that. And he's on these little tiny... You got the little Bowie dot. We talked about this. We talked about this album. If you tuned in yesterday, she has no idea we talked about this album. Stop it. We did. We, we talked did about, not talk about Because we talked, we talked about uh, our artwork from albums that was inspiring and influential. Yes. And I told how we saw this in Paris. So anyway, Pippin will sit at the sill like this. No doubt he's looking for squirrels. And he kind of stands there in his tail and everything. But I always... Sophia and I... Always say, oh, there's the kobold looking out of the paraffin. You know, you could just see this being a. And take a question. I'm going to. says that dog pose is the perfect summary of quarantine. Yes, it is. Okay, and you're going to take a question. I'm going to. I have a photo of this. I'm going to print it out so we can draw this, and I'm okay. going to make him a kobold. So you okay. Can, you take over. Sounds good. Yeah. What kind of questions? Can I answer a question? Well, you. Um, we wait for Tony. Richard Ball, uh, ooh, ooh, so, uh, Jill Suzanne Shipman had a great dame that chewed up a whole sofa on a dining table while teething. Whoa. Wow. We need a miniature of Pippin as a kobold. I agree with that, Michael Harbour. That would be amazing. That gets a like. Boom skis. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? Oh, gosh. Dean, no, I can't draw. It's literally the worst. It's really bad. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Just in case you forgot the shaky egg. That's actually eyeballs. Um, okay, let's see. What are we saying here? Oh, if you could have a non-mammal or insect pet, what would it be? Non-mammal or insect. A non-mammal. <sighs> Yeah, I, I do, I have to say, I like snuggly pets. So that's why the idea of pets as mammals appeal to me. Um, I wouldn't want necessarily an insect for a pet. I mean, lizards and geckos are cool. We always have, when I was a kid, you'd have one that like hung out on your, you know, pool area or something. And then I'd feed it stuff. I had a scorpion, remember that? What is that for, Ange? Oh, nothing. It's just, it's for our entertainment. It's a toilet paper tube that has um, googly eyes glued to it. And we made it into, you know, it's an instrument now. We just shake it. It's a percussion instrument. I'm back. That wasn't too bad. Ducks are great snugglers. What? What? Ducks? African gray parrots are cool, but, I ha and they are so awesome. And I had a friend who had one of those. But man, those things talk all the time. Yeah, they're super smart. Look, I've taken so many photos. It wasn't that hard to grab, go on the computer, grab a photo, and print it out really quick of Pippin. So we're going to make that into a uh, kobold looking, and we're going to turn that to a paraffit. Nice. Or parapet. I don't know if I'm saying it right. You guys got it. You know what I mean. Mm -mm -mm. You know, in the original Dungeons & Dragons, they, kobolds were described more dog-like. They were less like weird little lizard dragon things and more dog dogish. Um, let's see. All right, so I'm going to start with his head. Um, here, I'm gonna, let me draw on this so we can see, I can show you, like... They live forever. Those birds live forever. I'm gonna draw... I had, uh, my friend's African Grey was named Frankie. Hey, Frankie! And they were from New York. Um, oh, my gosh. And it was Frank Canigliero's bird. Oh, yeah, sure. And so then 
his mom would call me Angela. Angela, you want to come over and have some lasagna for dinner? And the bird talked just like her. Oh my God, that's amazing. So we go, hiya, Frankie. <laughs> it was so funny. Maybe you guys we do can... always take the dogs when we travel. Yes, and they, they go they travel. They're small enough that we make sure they can go on in cabin on the plane with us. So if you're looking here, what I've done is I've just taken a permanent pen and kind of traced over the, the printout here, just kind of drew his center line inch and uh, where his backbone would be. And just some kind of, I, I do this sometimes, it helps kind of see through the fur. Now I, I do this, I've spent so much time with our dogs that I know their anatomy fairly well, but if you are unsure of animal anatomy, um, uh, our friend um, Charles Knight did a great book. I'll grab it real quick, Ann. Fun fact, while Tony's grabbing that book, talking about animal anatomy, I was actually listening to an older interview with Orlando Bloom. Um, he did Howard Stern, and when he was on the Howard Stern show, he was telling about how when he found his dog filming on Pirates of the Caribbean, and the dog was like his best friend, was on the ships with him when he was filming. Wow. I mean, he was obsessed with this dog that he found just like in the middle of the beach or something like that, or desert or something. Because, of, of course, that dog was like, are you Orlando Bloom? Oh, my gosh. Legolas, I'm your dog. Oh, my gosh. Charles Knight, Anatomy, uh, Animal Drawing, Anatomy, and Action for Hours. Great resource book, another Dover classic. I may have even shown this one before because I feel like I've told the story of how oh, yeah. something, Mimi, something somebody chewed on it. Um, this is great because, <coughs> excuse me, it um, goes into musculature and skeletons um, certainly, especially for me, one of the things I've always, like the paws of animals, I've always found to be a bit tricky to draw. So this really kind of breaks it down. Charles Knight was a, was a known, um, um, uh, animal natural history artist and also, um, dinosaur artist. There's horses and deer and boar and rabbit and where are the dogs did i pass it i must have passed it it must have been early on oh here we go there's contents dogs page 28 okay we, what you're looking up dog anatomy yes My i am point in the orlando bloom oh story, you were still going with it I i'm was sorry going on it, and the reason why is because when orlando bloom's dog died Oof. he was super 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 sad and he contacted this company. Oh, I know where this is going. No, he didn't have him cloned. Oh, wow. But he got the dog skeleton and they posed it. He said like it's running because that was his favorite pose when his dog. And so he ended up, he has that in his house. It's like oh his my God. Is that what Katy Perry is going to, when Katy Perry <laughs> perishes, he's going to be like, I just remember Katy so fondly. I just needed to have her skeleton, and right? she's holding a microphone. Is that crazy or what? So here we go. This is a running lion, and here's a running greyhound. So we can see the difference between what a cat's skeleton is doing and a dog's skeleton is doing. Anyway, this is kind of handy-dandy to help. I've drawn out of this many times. I was thinking about that today. Uh, remember yesterday we were looking at the Andrew Loomis book, and I was, I was remembering that at... Um, I remember when, when our old intern Grace was here, I, I bought that book for her and I said, here, you want to get good? Copy every single drawing out of this book. Take however long, much time you need, but just copy. And I actually sat this morning for a while and, and did some copies out of that Andrew Loomis book. The Head and Hands one is so good. Really good stuff. Has anyone heard of Cuddle Clones? They make plushies out of your pets. Like out of it or of it? No, I think like... A reproduction oh, okay. of your pet as a plushie. Okay. I, like, I, not I actually taking your pet. Well, hey, pet. every, who knows? After seeing Orlando Bloom's strange, uh... Well, you know, so when we lived in New York, I worked down in Soho, and I, we worked, I worked across the street from a store called Evolution. Yes. And Evolution. It's probably Tony, still there. You loved Evolution. I still do. It was so cool. Like I've... it was cases and cases of taxidermied animals, skeletons, and insects and skeletons, and they would basically do 
taxidermying like for you so yeah. people a lot of like eccentric new yorkers would bring their pets in and have them stuffed yep and uh i remember someone had had their dog taxidermied their pet and you know the guys that worked at evolution were kind of twisted dudes and so they took they had broken the tail of the taxidermy dog by mistake so they were waiting to repair it but in the meantime they took the dog and placed it by the front door now what pose was it in Ange? it was just like standing no it was sleeping on its dog bed no it wasn't it was standing by the front door and i know this well there was a sleeping one they did have a sleep one but this one was standing okay and they t and i know this because they took a piece of monofilament fishing wire and w tied it to the end of the broken tail mm -hmm. rigged it with wire mm -hmm. took the string put it all the way against the wall from the front door of the store all the way to the back register mm -hmm. and the guys would hang out at the back register and then when people would come in the front door, they would pull on the monofilament and make the dog's tail wag. So people would come in and think that this was a real, like, living dog. And then not until they would pet it would they realize that this it's was actually a very cold, cold dog. dead dog. It's pretty, pretty messed up. Pretty? Yeah, it's pretty messed up. I'm telling you, they were... Yeah, it was it was crazy. All right, so but they I'm gonna, used to do all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna change to make him a kobold. <laughs> I'm gonna change his skull a little, or his ears a little bit. So his skull's probably doing this, and the ears are here. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. make his ears more like like a kobold's ears, upright. Kobolds also have little tiny horns. <laughs> I know it's sad. It was very twisted, but. These guys, if you're, working, you're like, but it was really funny. No, but well, I did laugh <laughs> when I saw it. I was like, that's pretty funny. I mean, I mean, you didn't do it. Listen, it brought people joy. All right, that's like people were. And by people, I mean and, well, the, the, the workers. Obviously, loved their dog. They wanted it taxidermy. That's so. true. And what I thought was interesting, even with Orlando Bloom and that skeleton, people were like, oh, you know, Howard Stern was like, does it make you sad? And he's like, no, it makes me really happy. Because it reminds me of, you know, my dog and how much I love my dog. And he's still with me. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just kind of creepy. That's a little strange. Did they weekend at Bernie's their dog? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they did. The dog was weekend at Bernie's. Yep. And guess what? Y'all laughed at weekend at Bernie's. Don't tell me you didn't. You didn't go, oh, that's, that's so sad for Bernie. No, you were like, that's hilarious. Look, they're hilarious. making... hilarious antics begin when you try and pop, prop up the dead guy to make him wave on the boat with the captain's hat on his head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> also uh, reenacted in Onward with the mm -hmm. the dad's legs. That's right. They kind of did a Weekend at Bernie's thing there. Mm -hmm. He looks less like a kobold and more like a Robin Hood type because I've given him a little cloak. You know about an RPG called Pugmire? No, but sign me up. I'm guessing it's pugs. <laughs> I know there was a hamster one, wasn't there at some point? Everyone was a hamster. Fancy cloak. Cobalt is fancy. I know. He's, he well, he's, fancy. I'm thinking if it's Pippin, he would, I'm thinking of Pippin the Hobbit. And, and less Pippin. But he's got a little bit of a Sir Didymus jam going, and I'm not going to take that away from him. Jason alone is already putting in a request for tomorrow. Oh, all right. Wow. It's he getting... wants you to draw dinosaurs tomorrow. Whoa. I haven't drawn dinosaurs in a long time. I could do that. It, it, I Ask can... and ye shall receive. Jason Alona. That's right. Yeah, I'm thinking this guy's like a little... How did they do character studies for Disney and Robin? And by the way, a lot of artists use taxidermy in animals. Our oh, friend, yeah. Uh, Diane DeGroat, who is a children's book author and illustrator. Known famously for Gilbert, Gilbert. the Possum. A lot of people may know. Yeah. Um, she has... Tons of taxidermied animals in her studio. Wearing tiny clothes. But she's dressed them up in adorable outfits. And I'm like, where did you get all these? eBay. <laughs> I was like, well, there you go. Yeah, I think of uh, when Disney worked on Bambi. I think they had 
uh, taxidermy deer and real deer and, and, and other various things. I'm going to guess for 101 Dalmatians, they probably had someone bring Dalmatians in. Yes, Hermione Granger. Just kidding, Linda Granger. Um, Soph is a Gryffindor. I always want to say Gryffindor, but then people say Gryffindor. Which is it? Gryffindor? <laughs> so here he is. He's, I mean, he's... He's more, looks almost fox-like. Yes, Judy Schachter does as well. You're correct. Oh, yeah, with uh, Skippy. Skippy. Skippy John Jones. Love those books. So love those books, too. For Bambi, they brought in rabbits and baby deer. Yeah, but I think they had taxidermied ones. Well, I want to say I've seen a f publicity still with Walt with uh, a, a stuffed deer. Ooh, Lexi's getting mouse guard. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Wow. Just, you guys post some stuff, and I'm like, wow. Like, Eduardo's comment. My grandmother looked exactly like Cruella de Vil. <laughs> well, that's a look. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love it. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess a, para a parapet is just a bunch of really heavy... Gryffindor. Rocks. Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Oh, yeah. Listen to the audiobook. Probably grass well, and stuff growing on some of it, and moss. You know, it's interesting because, as we've told you, there are a few secret projects that we have that we haven't been able to talk about. But one of them, T just had a phone call for today, and there is a main character in which the individuals working on this project, there are various pronunciations for the names. Yeah. Some people say it one way, some people say it another way. I guess it is, it's important because when somebody reads something, you're just reading it you, as you perceive it, not, not necessarily how the author intended it to be. Yes. Used. Like Hagrid isn't Hagrid. He's Hagrid. What? I just made that up. I remember the first time I read Hermione. I'm like, what? How do you say that? Like the first, because bef when those books were first coming out, you know, there was no movies and there was, you know, there was the audio book. But, you know, I was like, I think it was when Joe Rowling was on like the Today Show or something and she said her name. I'm like, oh, that's how you say it. Yeah. I thought it was like Hermione or something. It was weird. I didn't quite understand it. Anyway, here he is looking out at the, here, we'll put a, Put some rolling hills and some trees, just like he's looking at out in the distance. Mm. Kind of reminds oh, me of... Castles? Yeah, he's in a, it's, it's very kind of Robin, the Disney Robin Hood, actually. Yeah. He's like, who can I rob? <laughs> oh, yeah, we should... steal stuff. He yes. needs a little satchel. He needs a satchel. You wouldn't see it, but, you know, he also needs a... Right here. I think here. A sword. Little dog sword he'd have under his cloak here. There we go. Little dog sword. Voldemort. The T is supposed to be silent. Voldemort, right? Voldemort. I've, yeah, I think they do that in the movie, but I could be wrong. Yep. Don't pronounce the T. But, uh, you know, there's so many things I that we, that we mispronounce and then it becomes the standard that when you say it properly, everyone looks at you like you're crazy. Uh, one of the examples... I want to say Dr. Seuss is actually Zois. I think it's supposed to be like Zois. We we all say it wrong. Richard Scarry, I think, is Richard Scarry. No. Yeah. Can't believe it. Yeah. And Rick Ocasek, we thought was Rick Ocasek, it's and it's not, not Rick Ocasek. Ocasek. It's Rick Ocasek. Yeah. No one said that. Everyone said Rick Ocasek. Yeah. From the cars. Yep. Oh, here, no, wait. I'm just giving him little hairs. I think his little hairs would be... His, his, no, I think I his like little whiskers that. would be a little, like a little mustache. Ooh, look at him. Yeah, it's Pippin. He's got a little, you know, he's got a little panache. There he is looking out. So I'd say Everybody this is going to go. Always, always ask how to pronounce your last name, our last name. Dieter Lizzi? Yeah. But Dieter Lizzi is really. In, in, Italian, in Italy, and we were corrected. In Italy. Dieter Lizzi. They would say, no, your last name is Dieter Lizzi, like pizza. Yeah. Two Z's next to each other. Leet. A... Leet Z. Like, but I have that on my website. Like if people, it's it's one of the FAQs on my website. Um, you grew up 
Dieter Lizzie. Your parents pronounce your family pronounced it Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzie is what I grew up with. So Dieter the Lizzie. the leet was gone. It was just Lee. So it's Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzie is what I grew up Weird. with. Yeah. But it's Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzie. Dieter Lizzi and Tony with a Y. Not to, I can't tell you guys how many emails we get requests That's and people are like, and they're like, Tony, T-O-N-I. And I'm like, in Italian, that would make me a woman. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Nah. <laughs> it's Tony, not Tony. <laughs> Thanks, Josh Sanders. All right. There's Pippin as a, as a kobold lookout. <laughs> Joanne Lone, can I have today's junk pop, please? I think Sophia would fight you for it. I give him my earring, earrings. He definitely would have earrings, like a little traveling. Eh, maybe not. Looks, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's like I was trying to do the little, pirate, but it doesn't. It didn't quite work. Yeah, he doesn't. He's. What There'll is be the some, meaning behind Dieterlisi? Uh, Terlisi is a town in northern Italy near Milan, I think, and T, and D means from 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 Terlisi. Yes, although my great grandfather was from the Bari area, so the southern part of Italy, and, and immigrated with Grandma Dieter Lizzi in um, the late 1800s, early 1900s, through Ellis Island, and then settled in upstate New York. Is puka, puka, or puka? That's a good one. I always say puka, but I don't know if that's right. If anyone is here of... of Scottish? I think it's Scottish. It's Irish or Scottish. If someone here is, is uh, Molly Porridge, maybe you, I mean, that's close enough to you. Maybe you can uh, illuminate us. All right, I'm going to pick another dog to draw. And uh, I'm all about anthropomorphing it a little bit too, Ange. Keep that kind of going. Uh, Eduardo, I was I'm glad that I pronounced your last name right, Cabruja, right? That's where, I mean, I feel like I just look at that and I'm like, yep, that's what it is. Cabruja. But I'm sure there's a lot of mispronunciations. They probably want to pronounce the J, correct? <laughs> they, what's it, how's the song go? He's a tramp. Yeah, dog. That's literally the dog that sings the tramp song. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, look at that apple head. <whistles> that thing is like a bean ball. <gasps> Chinese crested, great dog. Oh, coffee? Did someone say coffee? That guy just, that's, you know. Wow. Loving the Bowie soundtrack today. Yeah. Try to find Joel something. Shipman wants a great name. Can you do a Chinese Crested? I just passed Chinese Crested. I mean, I could. No. I'm know. looking for something a little more. Well, just because their muzzle is very similar to Mimi, so I uh, feel like I want to try something, something that's... Something smashy-faced? Maybe. Yeah, I was thinking of Goblin and Pugs and French Bulldogs. French. Yeah, I could do a French Bulldog. Ooh, that guy's cool. Which guy? This guy? Yeah. The Borzoi. Yeah, it's like a deer. I was going to look for, um, yeah, I could do French. Let me see. That's not a terrier, I don't believe. It's non-sporting, right? Toy? You guys nailed Alona. Sweet. Pug's here, but not French Bulldog. I love dogs. Let me see. Oh, Pomeranians. A Pom? Oh, no. gosh. <gasps> Come on, look at Brussels. that Brussels griffin. That's pretty cool. That is awesome. That guy definitely. That, that dog. That dog. Eyebrows. Yeah, that dog talks. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a Brussels. If we got time, I'll get to the uh, to the Frenchie, but I definitely think a Brussels. I'm surprised we haven't seen more Brussels in movies. How do you say Slua? <laughs> I think you just said it. I said it. Slua. Slua, Slua. Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take it to the dump and garbage. Aren't Slua like they like garbage? I don't know. I was told by a Russian studies major that Baba Yaga is not Baba Yaga. Oh. What is Baba Yaga? How do you pronounce it then? Scottish Deerhound. I don't know what that is, but that sounds adorable. Pug, pug, pug. I like that you're chanting pug. Yeah, well, we're doing we're gonna do the Brussels instead of a pug because it's essentially a pug with a mustache. They are hilarious, actually. Um, a gal I went to high school with has a Brussels griffin, and she's always posting photos on Instagram. Okay. And I love those photos; they make me so happy. Stay. 
They crack me up. They yeah, have such personality. They this do. does look like Fizz Gig. And they look like they're just so annoyed all the time. <laughs> all the time. It does look like Fizz Gig. That's good. I'm trying to just get Somebody the head said, shape. What was Tom's nickname in high school? What was Tom Hoffelder's nickname in high school? Ooh, what was Tom Hoffelder's nickname in high school? I don't know that he had a nickname. I think it was just Tom. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think he had. Give the Brussels a bit of a Wilford Brimley face. It, it's going to happen no matter what because I'm drawing it. The, the, the Brimley's coming. I love the dog and storyteller, by the way, Elizabeth. Jeanine oh, Louise. that puppet was awesome. So was Sprocket. Sprocket was a great puppet, too. Yeah, they always do look kind of... Yeah, if you did it, like, as a character in a movie, it'd be... It would just be like... I mean, look at... He literally has... He's, like, doing the stink eye on somebody. That dog has diabetes. <laughs> oh, he's so stink-eyed. Love it. I worked with a griffin ages ago that was so chill you could drape it around your neck like a scarf and it would fall asleep. Hmm. Sorry, I'm quiet because I'm I'm so enjoying this. Tom Hoffeller said Hoff Navajo. What? I don't remember that. That must have been uh, when I was out of band. I love dogs that look like Muppets, Kate Blair Wheeler said. Yeah, I Kate, agree. Kate Blair Wheeler. Yeah, this does look like an Ewok. You're totally true, right. True true words. Western. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if No, Lucas had a dog, because that's what Indiana Jones is named after, and, and that's Chewbacca, but I don't know what kind of dog it was. I never I'm sure it's out I'm there. I'm obsessed with this face. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's a cool awesome. he's got a lot of personality. You can't do that. You can hear him talking. He does. He seems like he'd almost be in in 101 Dalmatians or Lady and Tramp, just yelling, yelling at the the protagonist. Yes. Idiot. Stink eye. Mimi is always giving side eye. She, she does a, a lot side of side eye. eye. Queen of the side eye. She really is. Uh, why are you using such a small pencil? It's still got a lot of pencil left. Why would I start a new one? That's just wasteful. Just really, we, come on, guys. We only got one planet. You know how many trees it took to, to make this pencil? Well, I don't know either, but I know I can save one. Penny said, I want to boop his nose. Boop! <laughs> Do you know who we found out was a booper? Who's a booper? Maurice Sendak was a booper. Remember we heard that story that that was like he was booping noses right before he passed away, and he was working on a book with booped noses? Yes! That's right. I don't know how that that just sprung in like it was way in the banks. I'm telling you. I realized that Maurice and I were kindred spirits when you found out. Lynn, who works with him, said that he loved watching The Real Housewives. I was like, oh my gosh, what I would have given to just sit and, and watch, watch House The Real Housewives with Maurice Sendak. Oh my gosh, I know. It's probably so catty. I would have loved it. Oh yeah, I'm sure he was. I feel like... I've shrunk his body a little bit to really give the emphasis on the head. I kind of want to push the body more and make it even skinnier. I'm going to just try that and see how He's that looks. He's got my back against the Devon Rex death glare. I love him. What's his name? Gizmo? Yeah, that just happened. There is no other name now. That's all you see is Gizmo. Isn't there one named Gizmo? I feel like I have seen... Maybe it is. I'm pulling it out is of it something. Is it in something? I mean, it looks... Well, no. Okay. And as good as it gets is when the is when this dog becomes super popular. That was the... Remember, um, Jack Nicholson had one. And it was... Everyone loved it. And then it kind of became the the dog for a minute. I feel like giving him long, longer legs is actually kind of interesting. Mm, not like... No, too long. Too I don't long. know. I like the idea of him being kind of lanky with this no, big head. It's funny. No? no. Mm -mm, it's too long. It looks like a horse body with a Brussels Griffin head on it. <laughs> I mean, but look at that. Look at this one. Like, that's it. I mean, it, I'd shag it. I mean, he'd have shag. I kind of feel like that's it. No? In fact, I would almost take the legs and make them 
We almost don't even see the paws. It's just little nothings. I like that better. See, that's that's how art direction works, folks. I draw and Ange goes, I don't like that. And I keep going, I like that better. Then it's done. done. <laughs> But we wasn't the only one to do a song about 1984. Paul McCartney also did a... <laughs> he looks like he should be dressed as wider. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he definitely would be like... Is there a pipe or... He definitely looks like he he's like wizard material. I just love him. His little face. It's the little ears too. That's, that's kind of unexpected is to give him these little kind of tiny ears it's kind of adds to the personality yeah. i mean they're small they not have neck. you never see their neck it's like a pug's ears it's very and then just these it does look like a shaggy horse what is it about it yeah but look at the i'm telling you look at the general body shape is this like ridiculous head on all kind of it's just a look at that Let me see. i'm a wizard you're a wizard harry that's why I'm just trying to capture a little bit of that. It's the when you originally did the sway back. That's why because they don't have sway back like that. They have like flat backs. Yeah, but I, I, that's what I've got. Yeah, yeah, that helps. I don't know. There's something about it I like. He's funny. Off the gruff. Oh, well done. Gizmo the gruff. Okay, let me see if I can get a little shit. I dub him Guy Gax. Grumpfinkel. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Grimly, that'll be our third dog. That's awesome. Um, Tom, I saw that you posted something with a song on the group page, but I we haven't looked at it because we have been in Zoomers. crazy town, Zooming, Instagram lives, meetings, all, all the live long day. All the things. I, um... I... I have a book I'm going to talk about tomorrow, Ange. The um, uh, fantasy exhibition at the Rockwell had that book published. It came out, I think, or it's getting ready to come out. So I'll, I'll talk about it tomorrow, though. Okay, awesome. I was just thinking it occurred to me why, uh, why we're here drawing. <laughs> just kind of... Kind of finding a... You know what it is? I don't know. Uh, Tell me. The leg shape, you just have to knock out that little that little shape in there. This? Mm, that back side of it. It's not straight like that. You see how it has the... Yeah, but I'm stylizing it as I'm going here. But I think that's important to the posture. See, then that looks more like doggy legs. Doggy legs. Yeah, where are you guys? I mean, the other thing is just put him in a darn sweater already. I feel like this guy in a turtleneck would be would go a long, long way. I'm going to try that. I'm going to draw him again. Um, you got to visit the Rockwell Studio Charity. It's awesome. So cool. So cool. I'm looking at this the other one. The light in that studio is so awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, he looks like he has hooves a little bit. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, they're so the, small, but underneath well, it's the... the square, like, the, it's only the uh, back ones. It's because you just have... You see the little toes kind of peek out. little round. Yeah. It's got all this beard. I mean, it's really this kind of... It's funny it's called a Brussels griffin and not a, like a bearded pug. From Brussels? I'm guessing it's from Belgium. Ooh. It worked as a ratter at farms and stables and was originally called the Stable Griffin. It was imported to England and America in the 1880s. This dog's protruding jaws and rich whiskers give it a humorous, sweet look. So it's got a... It's, it's that back leg on there. It is... It's got a, I'm moved on. I'm not even on that anymore. <laughs> no, see how it's turned Oh, out. it's got a... It's, the nose is even more... 
question. He has a prospector voice. Yes, I he does. He's got like the old minor 49er. Maybe? Well, which is also pretty much Wilfred Brimley's voice when you do it. Yeah. Stink Eye. That's his name. Stink Eye. Or just Stinky. <laughs> Is that where the Robert McCloskey exhibit was? Robert McCloskey exhibit was, I believe, at the Eric Carle Museum mm -hmm. and then went to the Boston Museum of Fine Art. But I don't think it's on tour any longer. I think it's done. That was an amazing exhibition. Agree. He was fit into a spittoon. Spittoon. Um, you know, it's funny. I was somebody mentioned that I was thinking about Ange. I have so many photos of some of that great, oh, so many ex exhibitions we've been to, and I was thinking about that. Like it'd be kind of cool to find a place to post the, some of the, the the especially like the McCloskey stuff. I took a ton of photos, you know, really up close of the uh, artwork, so you could really see the process and see what he's using. It'd be cool to find a place to like. The Carl Museum just doesn't post a lot of that kind of stuff, which is too bad because I think for artists like us, it's such a cool resource to be able to see the original. Ooh, Elizabeth went to the recently went to the Alan Lee exhibition. Oh, where was that at? Bournemouth. Oh wow, was it his his whole breath of work, or was it just his Lord of the Rings that stuff? That sounds amazing. Yeah, big fan of his stuff. He's definitely mean mugging. He needs a derby hat. <laughs> Ooh, I like a derby hat. Oh, I, I haven't even gotten to where I was going with this, which he's a was... angry. He's like kind of gangster or something. Well, that's what I was going to put him in, a tiny turtleneck. I just felt like I could see him in a, a little turtleneck with his... Eh, tennis balls are for suckers. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that was Richard Ballsley said. He looks like he'd say tennis balls are for suckers before chasing after one. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And he, he could be friends with old Alheimer. Uh, also agreed. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's cool. Older work and a few from of his Hobbit drawings. Nice. His stuff in, in fairies was, was great. So good. A couple of those pieces have come up for auction, and I really kicked myself for not grabbing them when I, when I had the opportunity because it doesn't come up very often. What? He's on Facebook, though. Charity says, what artists influence your art since you, you're mentioning all these exhibitions? Oh, God, what artists haven't influenced my art? I go through phases, too, where I get really deep into uh, certain people. Um, Often, I feel like it depends on what projects you're on, too. Yeah, I, I, I try to look at different artists that I've always admired to see if there's ways they can inspire me for a, a project that I'm on so that I can... Get, use it as an excuse to dive deeper. You know, I mean, obviously when I first got started out with fantasy, doing fantasy work, I mean, I was looking at Brian Froud and Arthur Rackham. I, I don't think that's any surprise there. But as time's gone on, I mean, I'm really looking at so many other artists. Um, um, and, and there are, are classic illustrators out there that I didn't even know anything about and then, you know, have discovered as an adult, like Pete Hawley, who I, you know, grew up with but didn't know who he was. I mean, he did a lot of the um, Valentine cards and, 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 and um, Halloween decorations that we, you know, would have grown up with, Ange. But, you know, you don't think about who that artist is. Right. And then I just wanted to know who that artist was and then went down a crazy rabbit hole and then learned who Pete Holly was and just had this incredible appreciation. In fact, on Instagram, I did a, I did a little mini, um, like thing just showing off some of the Pete Holly ephemera that I've collected over the years. And we have one original painting of his, but, uh, you know, and then I get into that and then it, it, it influences inevitably and it influences my, my art. It, the, the, these cards that we did, um, for mother's day, this is totally influenced by Pete Holly. You can see it, and uh, and he would do these real heavy lines around his stuff. So yeah, but the point is, I you know it's it's a constantly moving target. I mean, we when we designed this last week, we were looking at Drew Struzan and and uh, Disney and Pixar and 
you know, so it's, it's, there's so many. I know. There's so many. And then there's so many artists whose names you don't even know. You know, you're yeah. just looking online, Google Images, I Instagram. Yeah, I mean, yesterday. Now, modern artists that you're just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, yesterday we were looking at. Which, by the way, I'm going to interject for two yeah, seconds. Sure. I think it's really important. Uh, you either tag or like watermark your own w work with your name because people are sharing so much art on the internet. I think it's important that if you know if you can to get your name on your work, especially if you're trying to get your work out there more. You could label your JPEG with your name too. That's always good. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, I feel bad I've because seen stuff and I'm like, who is that? I don't even yeah. know who this artist is. Yeah. You could reverse look it up though, I yeah. suppose. Um, but I, you know, to that end, I mean, I feel a little bad. Yesterday, Angie, we were looking at. I googled underwater dancers for mermaid reference and just found these unbelievably inspiring photographs of of various ballerinas and stuff photographed underwater doing these magnificent poses. And um, didn't even think to be like, okay, this is photographer, you know, blah blah blah. Who did this? Is what they specialize in. Um. Anyway, there's that guy. Who I like. Um, I think that's good. I think we should call it a day from here. I mean, we got some dog drawing done, answered some questions. I think tomorrow, if Sophia's up for it, maybe she can join me in um, draw live by request if she's if she's feeling up to it. Cool. And uh, you know, we'll go from there. So you want to play us out and and pick a junk pot winner? Oh my goodness, I have to pick a junk pot winner. Tony and I have our little secret code here. Um, let's see. Hold on. I'm She's looking. I have to. First, I'm queuing up the song. I have so much multitasking now. I know. It's always. Uh, it's. Ooh, oh. Pippin, what did you hear? He must have seen a squirrel. Another squirrel. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. It was fun. I like drawing the Brussels Griffin. Or bearded Griffin. Bearded dragon. It looks like. Okay. Okay, I've got a winner. You got a winner? We have a winner. All right, I'll give you a drum roll. Hold on. Here it comes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Drawing to, Drawn to Fantasy today. Today's winner we are excited to announce is <laughs> Lee Edward Fody. Lee Fody. You are the winner today. On Very Drawn nice. To Fantasy. You're the junk some, pot. Some dogs coming your way. All right. I recognize that name, and Lee has been a fan for a long time. I'm so excited that Lee won today. Lee, I'll make it, uh, make sure it's loaded with all kinds of Dietrich Lizzie goodness. You guys are terrific. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Tomorrow's dinosaurs. Tomorrow, I could just draw dinosaurs, or we could draw live by request. Let's let's just we'll start with dinosaurs and see, see where it do. goes. Um, Thank you guys for joining us again. Thank you so much. Lee, make sure you send me a direct message on Facebook so I can mail your uh, junk pot out. Until then, hang in there. Stay safe. Stay sane. Stay sane. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. And um, stay in your lane when you're driving. Unless, you, you know, or put your blinker on when you go to change, when you go to move. That's always, you know, it's just common courtesy, right, Ange? Stay awesome, T. I'm going to try. You stay... stay hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to stay sleeping. I think I just... Stay, stay, <laughs> stay in a, bed. Stay in bed. Why wake up? It's just another day. Slurs day. Oh, Take care, guys. guys. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>